Welcome back to Mr. Bello's classroom. Today, we're going to talk about graphing and slope. So, the first thing we want to look at is what makes a good graph. So, if I start with my x and y axis, and I'm making a line graph in this case, what do I need to have on a complete, well done graph? And the first thing is that I need to have some type of label on the side. So, what am I graphing? And with that label, I always need to have units. So a label with units to tell me what I'm doing on each side. Now as we progress further, we'll find that this is always going to be our independent variable. Always along the x-axis. And the independent variable is the one that you're making the choice on. So it doesn't depend on the other variable which is called our dependent variable, and we'll go on our y-axis. <clears throat> so now that we have these things labeled and on our graph, the next thing we want to look at is what else do I need? Well, I need some kind of scale. So on graph paper, the grid marks are already laid out for you, but I need to have some kind of scale on my graph so that I know what I'm doing. Now, along this scale, Maybe you go by ones on the bottom. And you can go by any increments you want, whatever works best for the data that you're graphing. But these have to be equal increments between each marking. So up the side, I could go, maybe I want to go by threes. And so again, I can go by threes up the side because they're all in equal increments. And we get up there. So I have my graph labeled with the correct units. I know which variables are on uh, which axis. I then want to make a title for my graph. And so the title is usually going to go dependent variable versus independent variable, depending on what those are. So a good title could be something where it can be very simple. Now I've got a title, I've got my labels, I've got all my numbers, time to plot my data. And so I start plotting my data, and it comes out to maybe something that looks like this. And so I've got a scatter plot with some data that I collected in the lab. With that data, I want to create a best fit line. And a best fit line is a, a linear, um, trend line through this that gets as close to as many points as possible. So maybe for this graph it looks something like that. So this is my line of best fit. I'm going to use the line of best fit to find the slope of my graph. Now the other thing you want to make sure you always have in a graph, or that you always do with a graph, is you want to use the entire paper. Make it nice and big, fill the, fill the space you have so that we can read it easier and analyze it a little more simply. So this is a pretty good looking graph. I've got a title, I've got everything labeled, I've got my data with my best fit line, and I've used the entire piece of paper or the entire board in this case. So now when I start to analyze that data, I want to look for the slope. To find the slope, I'm going to use my best fit line finding an average. So on the best fit line, you'll see that I have one point that fell on the line, but not two. And when we find slope, we often want to use two lines or two points. So slope can be thought of in two ways. Either the way you all learned in math class, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, or simply a rise over a run. We're going to do it both ways so you can see the answer comes out the same. So in this case, I would use this as one of my points. If I follow it over and down, I can see that this point has an x value of 9 and a y value of 27. So I need to find one more point. 
as we said, there's not another point on the line. So I'm just going to pick another point that would fall on the line. Even though it's not part of my original data set, it's on my line of best fit. So in this case, I've chosen the point 4, 12. So I have two points that fall on the line. I can find my slope. So let's do it the first way y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So if I label my points, I have x1 and y1, and I have x2 and y2. So 27 minus 12 divided by 9 minus 4. Gives me 15 on top and 5 on the bottom, which would be a slope of 3. So that's using y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. If I use rise over run, I would do something very similar. I'd stick at this point still, and I would go over, and I would go up. This is my rise, and this is my run. I rose from 12 to 27, which is 15, and I ran from 4 to 9, which is 5, and I'm still going to get a slope of 3 at the end. So if I write this out, I rose 15, I ran 5, which still gives me a slope of 3. So what does the slope mean? Well, we have our labels are pretty generic, but what I'd look for is rise over run. So it's dependent variable over the independent variable, and those would end up being my units. So for the lab we did the other day, or the uh, graphing activity where we had distance jumped and height, it would be centimeter per centimeter, which would cancel out. Oftentimes we're going to have things like meters per second, or uh, newtons per kilogram, or even meter per second per second. But this is a very simple overview of how to graph appropriately, and then find your slope from that graph. Uh, later, we'll start doing equations of a line, and for us, that will always take slope-intercept form, which of course is y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope that we have already found. Thank you for watching. Please come in with any questions you might have.